Hi, my name is Shannon Bacusis. I'm an applications engineer with Dynastream with the Ant Group. Uh, today we're here to do a power consumption demonstration. And when we're interested in power consumption, what we really want to know about is current draw. So we've set up a little demonstration here using the components you can buy in a standard Ant development kit. We took a battery board, an I.O. interface board, and in this case we used an AT3 module because we wanted to use the sensor core capabilities to set up and control the modules and have them run as standalone. So over here we have a, the battery board with an I.O. interface board mounted on top. We also have a second battery board that we've uh, modified so that we can pull the current through the multimeter and see all the current that's going into the module. So the current that you'll be seeing is not just the current that the module is pulling, but the current that the entire supporting circuitry is pulling. So as I was saying, we use the AT3 modules because uh, we want to use the sensor core capability. So I have a few modules here that have already been downloaded with the sensor core script. And basically what they're doing is sampling the digital buttons and they'll be transmitting which button gets pushed and lighting up the corresponding LED on the other side. So over here we have the master standalone module and that's transmitting at 36 Hertz. The reason we have such a high message rate is because we need to be able to see the average current drawn. So you can see when I press button A over here we have button A on the slave side lighting up and again if I push button A on the slave LED on A on the master lights up. Similarly if I press any button so we can make sure that the communication link is actually established and then we can see the current drawer on the multimeters so on the master transmission side you can see that we're drawing an average of about 480 microamps and then on the receiver side we have about 560 microamps. So what we had to do was, as I said, we needed high message rates in order to be able to see the average current. So I have another module here where I've increased the message rate from 36 to 60 hertz. And I can just reset the modules. And again, we can see that they're communicating. And if we look at the average currents on the transmit side, we now have 790 microamps. And on the receive side, about 900 microamps. So what we did was we looked at a wide variety of message rates, increasing it from 24 hertz up to almost 200 hertz and we measured the current draw, looked at the relationship and then we were able to calculate the current draw at lower message rates. Okay, so now we have the graph of the measured current draw for the different message rates. For the purpose of this graph, the message rate is defined as bytes per second as opposed to hertz. Because we're more interested in the current draw that we're getting for the amount of data that's going across the air. So here you can see that the measured current around 36 hertz corresponds to the current that we showed earlier in the demonstration, it's around 500 microamps. So at 60 hertz, which is around 480 bytes per second, you're looking at 8 to 900 microamps. And so here you can see in pink, the current draw for the slave is slightly higher than the current draw for the master, which is what you would expect given that receivers do tend to use a little more power than masters, than transmitters. So there's a very linear relationship and over here on the right hand side we've got the trend line added and the equation corresponding to that trend line and again the other equation representing current draw for the master. So we can now take these equations and as you can see they've got very high correlations and zoom into the lower message rates and calculate the average currents for those lower message rates. And you can see that a typical operation for our AMP Plus devices and a lot of our AMP impl implementations is a 4 hertz message rate which corresponds to 
32 bytes per second, which I've labeled here on the graph. You can see that the average current for the master is around 51 microamps, and the average current for a slave is 61 microamps. And if you were to go online and use our online power estimator, these values would come very close to the values that you see on that estimator. These values are actually a little bit lower because we did use a sensor core implementation, and sensor core removes the need for a serial port, so it has a lower current draw. So now we're going to show you our online power estimator, and we're going to use this to verify our results, as well as to verify the power estimator application. So once you've selected power estimator from our This Is Ant website, first off you want to select the Ant product. Now as I said in the demonstration, we used an AT3 module. For serial mode, we actually use sensor core. Uh, that has not yet been implemented on the power estimator. So in order to get our lowest estimation, I want to use the asynchronous serial port with 57600 board rate. So the number of channels, we were using a single channel. It was a transmit channel that was operating at 4 hertz. We can also look at battery information. We know we're using a 2032 coin cell. For now, we'll just say there's an available 100% uh, capacity. And we'll say that we use it for an hour per day. And then if you click on estimate, over on the right hand side, you're gonna see the results. So it says here for the master, the total average current is gonna be 56.6 microamps. That's including the base current of 2.6 microamps and calculated on a 4 hertz broadcast messaging scheme which results in about a 54 microamp current draw which is actually quite close to the 50 microamps that we calculated earlier in our Excel spreadsheet. So we can also use this to calculate the current on the slave side, so on the receiver. So if we look at that we're going to have to put our reverse channel parameters in. So we're receiving and, broadca and broadcasting at 4 hertz. Again, we can use the 2032 coin cell battery. Click on estimate and have a look at our results. So here you can see that the total average current is a lot higher than what we uh, calculated. So it's 75 microamps. Whereas what we were actually seeing with the, cat with the so what we're actually seeing on the multimeters is slightly lower and this can be accounted for in the fact that we're using sensor core and the serial port draws significant current on the slave side so that accounts for the differences.